Welcome to Three Steps to Sketch. In this video, we'll graph a shifted secant graph, the equation y equals negative secant of x plus pi over 4. You can see that we have a shift here in the input x plus pi over 4, that plus pi over 4 is your key, that you have a shift. And as we evaluate this and analyze, we'll see this is going to be a shift horizontally, or left, pi over 4. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's an outline of our method. I use this for every graph just to stay organized. A quick overview, you'll see step one, we're going to find the companion equation and all of its essential information. That's simply the reciprocal equation will replace the secant with its reciprocal cosine. And we're using this method because it's likely you already know how to graph cosine equations if you're trying to graph a secant. So that's why we're relying on this as our method. All right, in step two, we'll plot that companion pattern and then take care of the shifts. And in step three, we'll actually transform what we've done to that point into the reciprocal graph that we want. We'll sketch it in and then we'll repeat. So let's get started. I think it's worth noting the general form of a shifted secant equation. It's y equals a secant of bx minus c plus d. Okay, you can see we don't really have that plus d term. We're not going to have a vertical shift here. Um, I do like to note the general form has this bx minus c, and our equation has a plus sign there. So if you want to rewrite this as x minus negative pi over 4, I think then you can more clearly see that your c term is actually negative pi over 4. So that's a quick tip just to avoid any sign or shifting error. All right, so step one, we're going to find our companion equation. Simply rewrite our equation, replacing secant with cosine. So we're going to get information on y equals negative cosine of x plus pi over 4. All right, some quick analysis here for our base graph. This is our companion graph. Um, a is the leading coefficient, so that's an understood negative 1. Okay, when I see a negative value for a, I like to go ahead and put a star down in step two, just to remind myself it's going to be a vertical reflection of the base pattern. And so we'll talk more about that when we get to that step. Um, for now, it's enough to know we have that vertical reflection and the a is going to help us set the y coordinates for our maximum and minimums for our companion pattern. All right, b is the coefficient of x, another understood one here. Okay, that tells us we'll have one cycle of our graph happening between 0 and 2 pi, and we also use b to find the period or the length of one horizontal cycle. And we calculate that with 2 pi divided by b. So easy enough, our period is 2 pi here. All right, now that we have that basic information, let's go ahead and decide on how to label our axes. So an easy way to get a good horizontal axis scale is to take your period and divide by 4. And this ensures that your companion pattern in step two, before you shift, will align nicely with your horizontal tick marks. So that's why I choose to do it this way. All right, so two pi divided by four simplifies to pi over two. That's how we'll count tick marks horizontally. And for the vertical axis, one usually works well. You can look towards your value of A to see if you may want something different. But like I said, one is usually a really good starting place. So let's take a moment now and label this grid. Starting with the horizontal axis, count by one pi over two. So we have 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2 reduces to pi, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, that reduces to 2 pi, and 5 pi over 2. And the other side of the axis will be the same, of course, just with negative signs. So we'll take a quick moment to get that set up. All right. And now that we have that, let's go ahead and label our vertical axis counting by ones. Right, and it's just nice to have this grid pre-labeled. It makes the, the following steps much easier. All right, the last bit of companion equation analysis, we'll look at our shifts. And so earlier we already said we don't have anything past the parentheses of our secant function. So we have no vertical shifting. That would be our D term. But we do want to say we have a phase shift or a horizontal shift. And to find that, Take your C term and divide by B, and that goes back to what we were saying before. If you have a plus sign within your parentheses of your trig function, you want to make sure you think about that as minus a negative value of C. And that'll just ensure that you shift the correct way. In this case, since we have C as negative pi over 4 and B as 1, 
our phase shift is going to be negative pi over 4, or moving to the left by pi over 4 units. A uh, quick note on that, that's going to move us into the middle of our horizontal tick marks when we do those shifts. I think that's completely okay if at the end you wanted to go back and label the midpoints of each of your tick marks by each pi over 4, you could do that. I don't think it's necessary. I think it's going to be pretty clear. Um, but we'll get to that when we do our shifting in the next step. All right, a final piece of analysis. In this step, I like to go ahead and find the asymptotes equation for our secant graph. And I'll put a link in the video description um, to go to a playlist that has a few videos on this topic in a lot more detail and explanation. But for this, we'll just kind of stick to the basics, to what you absolutely need to know to do. All you need to do is set your inputs of your secant function. So that's this x plus pi over 4. And I'll do a little scratch work here. So we're going to take our inputs of our secant function and set them equal to the parent asymptotes of y equals secant x. So those happen at pi over 2 plus pi k. Basically, you're taking the horizontal transformations and applying them to the original asymptotes, and that'll give you the asymptotes equation for your particular equation. So once you have this set up, all you need to do is solve for x. That means subtracting pi over 4 from both sides, noting that pi over 4, or that minus pi over 4, is only a like term with the pi over 2 on the right side. That pi k is its own type of term, so we don't have to worry about anything there. All right, and we'll write our final equation here in our asymptotes blank. So pi over 2 minus pi over 4 is going to be pi over 4 plus pi k. And in case you aren't familiar with that k term, k is just an integer. And depending on which integer you substitute in, you'll get a different asymptote for your particular equation. And that's why I like to do this here. I like to kind of anticipate where my asymptote should be for my final graph. So plug in 0 for k, we should have 1 at pi over 4. Let k be 1, do a little simplifying. We should have another asymptote at x equals 5 pi over 4. If you let k equal negative 1, we should be anticipating another asymptote at x equals negative 3 pi over 4. So play around with that, get comfortable, and like I said, I'll post some more resources for that in a link in the video description. All right, we've done the bulk of the work here. We've analyzed, we've organized, we're ready to get graphing. So step two we're going to plot the companion pattern for our companion equation from step one, and we'll take care of the shifts as well. Now note that you are going to do this in a different color. I'm going to use light blue, or you can just mark this lightly. This is not your final graph. It's just your helper or your intermediate to get to your final secant graph. So recall that a cosine graph, its base pattern is going to be maximum x-intercept, minimum x-intercept. But we have this star here. We noted that vertical reflection because our a term was negative, and so we should be expecting that for this graph, we'll have minimum x-intercept, maximum x-intercept. So it just kind of flips over the x-axis there. All right, so we start still with our point on the y-axis. This is our y-intercept, and you're going to get the y-coordinate simply by looking at the value of a, so that's negative 1. Okay, lightly mark, or in light blue, this is our minimum for our companion graph before shifting. Okay, move over to the first horizontal tick mark to the right. Remember, we designed this scale intentionally, so each of the first companion pattern points would align nicely. This will be an x-intercept. Move to the next horizontal tick mark to the right, so pi. This will be our maximum, and you get its y-coordinate by taking the opposite value of a, so 1. All right, and then our final point, another x-intercept that happens at our third horizontal tick mark to the right, 3 pi over 2. So hopefully here you can kind of see what would be that reflected, that vertically reflected cosine curve forming. All right, now we're ready to shift. If you had a vertical shift as well, you could do both of these things together. I think that would be easy enough, but for now we just have this phase shift or horizontal shift left pi over 4. And again, notice that our horizontal tick marks we counted by pi over 2, but of course halfway between 0 and pi over 2, you could put, if you wanted to, these tick marks that would serve as your pi over 4 increments as well. Okay, so all you need to do 
is take each of your original companion pattern points and shift them left five or four or half a horizontal grid unit. So I'll mark this pattern with X's. So there's the one that was the Y intercept. Move that X intercept over, move the maximum over and move that other X intercept over. So we're just shifting everything left half a horizontal grid unit or the equivalent of five or four units. All right, we're ready for step three where we transform this into our secant graph. And so you just need to know how the points correspond to each other. Uh, I usually like to start at the original X intercepts. So those were the second point and the fourth point that we filled in respectively. So those turn into vertical asymptotes because they were originally zeros. And when you try to take the reciprocal of a zero, you get something undefined. And those are denoted by vertical asymptotes. Okay, so we're putting those vertical asymptotes in. Okay, and then the other two are pretty easy as well. So what was a minimum from your cosine companion pattern? That will turn into a local maximum or a relative maximum for your secant graph. And so I'm going to go ahead and start to sketch in the secant curve. It would kind of look just like this. Okay, what was a maximum for your cosine companion pattern? Put a point there. That's going to turn into a local or relative minimum. And your secant curve will form just like this. All right, so here we have one cycle. And then we can repeat for as many cycles as we need. Um, I'm going to make a quick edit here. Technically, I sketched in just a little too much of that secant curve here. Just wanted to show you here for our first cycle. I drew in just a little too much of that secant curve. And then we want to draw in to the next start of that local or relative maximum just to make sure we stayed within that one cycle. But you'll see that as we repeat our pattern, you're going to be just filling in the gaps here. So we have the next cycle, another vertical asymptote here. Okay, and we could work the other direction as well. So here's the part that we had sketched in. Just starting to work that pattern backward, a little bit better there. We'd have a vertical asymptote, we're working on these half increments. All right, we would have another local minimum here. Go ahead and draw in that vertical asymptote just so it's a little easier to sketch. A nice little secant curve. All right, and then one more here, making sure I'm staying on those half increments. You have several nice cycles here, about two and a half cycles of y equals negative secant x plus pi over four. And of course you could keep going for as long as you want. Um, a couple quick things to double check just to feel even that much more confident in the accuracy of your graph. Look back to that asymptotes equation. Remember we said when k is zero, we should have an asymptote at pi over four and that we do. You see this next one moving to the right, we said that when k is 1, we should have an asymptote at 5 pi over 4. We do. If you kept working your way right, you could substitute in k is 2. You'd see that you get the asymptote here at 9 pi over 4. All right, working backward, check for accuracy. k is negative 1. That's the asymptote we talked about at negative 3 pi over 4. And if you let k equal negative 2, you have this asymptote at negative 7 pi over 4. So that's a really cool way to double check yourself. And that's, again, why I like finding that asymptotes equation near the beginning. Um, sometimes I like to go back to B. We said that that's how many cycles should happen between 0 and 2 pi. A quick check between 0 and 2 pi. And it's kind of a weird cycle, but you can definitely see that one full cycle happens in that space. So that's just another good way to double check yourself. All right, hopefully this helped you get down the three steps to sketch method for graphing secant functions that are shifted. Uh, be sure to check links in the video description. I'll post a lot more worked examples um, and I'll have examples for all the other trig functions as well. Thanks for watching.